Lesson 21 deals with product rule and like terms with exponents. Now, let's talk about putting together common bases that have exponents. Now, remember, 4 to the 5th does not mean 4 times 5. So, 4 to the 5th is not 20. It means 4 times itself. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. Okay? And then whatever all that is multiplied out. Uh, that also means that if you take 3 to the 4th and multiply it times 3 to the 2nd, you have 3 times 3 times 3, 4 times, times 3 times itself twice. Okay? Um, that also means if you have 8 to the 1st times 8 to the 3rd, you have 8 times itself once times 8 times itself 1, 2, 3 times. Okay. So just like we set up above, if 3 to the 4th is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, and 3 squared is 3 times 3, how many 3's do we have here now? Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are 6 of them. So how can we write 3 multiplied by itself 6 times easier? Well, 3 to the 6th. Which just so happens to be what 3 to the 4th times 3 squared is. Now, the rule is, and this is actually quite simple, whenever you have common bases raised to exponents, you just add the exponents together. So something like, oh, I don't know, how about 3 to the 4th times 3 to the 6th? That is equal to 3 to the 4 plus 6, which is 3 to the 10th. Just add the exponents together on the top, okay? Now, the, exp the bases have to be the same, as we're going to see in our first example here. We have x to the third, y squared, x to the sixth, y third. We can only put x exponents together and y exponents together. So watch this. We're going to put the 2x exponents together. We have x to the 3 plus 6 times y to the 2 plus 3. That was these two guys right there. All right, so we have x to the 3 plus 6, which is x to the 9th, times y to the 2 plus 3, which is the 5. So we got x to the 9, y to the 5th. Let's try number 2. We got r to the 8, s to the 3rd, s to the 8, r to the 9, s to the 3. Let's put the r's together. So we got 8 plus 9, which is 17, r to the 17, s to the 3, plus 8, which is 11, plus 3, which is 14. S to the 14th. And that is as simple as I can get. R to the 17, S to the 14. Okay? We'll save numbers 3 and 4 for you, and that's where we'll start that concept in class. Now, let's go to the back. And talk about combining like terms with exponents. Remember, 7 to the 1st is just 7, and even 100 to the 1st is just 100. That means any number to the 1st power is just that number. Uh, formal definition of it, raising any number to the 1st power, x to the 1st equals x. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to put this concept together with uh, adding together like terms. Remember, the only way we can add together like terms uh, terms as if they are like. And what I mean by being like is if they have the same combination of variables. Notice that every term here has an x, a y, and a z. It doesn't matter what order they're in, just as long as those letters show up and only those letters show up. That means we're allowed to put together the coefficients out front. The coefficients are the whole numbers in the front. So we got 5 plus 2 plus 3, which is uh, 5 and 2 is 7, plus 3 is 10, and then some combination of x, y, and z. This is all this simplified. Okay. Quick note, x is not the same as x squared, nor is it the same as x cubed. So we can't put x's together with x squares, and we can't put x squared together with x cubes. Okay. So let's try and put 6x squared together with 3x squared. Well, notice that both of these terms have x squareds in them. That means they're like terms. So we're allowed to add the coefficients. We have 9, and then whatever our quantity was, we have 9x squareds. 
We had six of them and three of them, put them together. Now we have nine of them. Okay. In number two, we have a little wrinkle that we add in here. We have x cubed, x cubed, x squared. Notice that this guy here is going to go together with this guy here. This x squared is going to be left alone by itself because it doesn't have another x squared to be added with. So we have 3 plus 4, which is 7, x cubed, and then just plus x squared at the end. Bring this one along for the ride because we don't have anything to add it with. Let's move on to number 3. We have 7x to the 4, 8x to the 4, those go together. That's 15x to the 4. And then we have y squared. So we have 2 plus 1, which is 3y squared. Here we have z cubes and xy's. I will leave this one for you to work on on your own. Because what we really need to talk about are something like this that's a little more complex. This one says 2m to the third xy squared p plus 3pxy squared m cubed minus 10xy squared m cubed p plus yx squared m cubed p. We need to figure out if these are all like terms. Now what they need to have is the same combination of variables to the same powers. Let's start with the m cubed. This has an m cubed. That one has an m cubed. So does that. So does that. m cubes are fine. Let's write it down. This one has an x. So does this. So does this. Oh, this one has an x squared. So we already know that this one is not a like term to this, this, or this. We need to move on now and look at the y squareds. We have a y squared here. Let's write down our x for these three like terms. Maybe that they're like terms. We have a y squared, y squared, y squared. And we don't even need to look at this one because we know this is already not the same as these guys. So we have a y squared in our term. Finally, we need to look at the p. Here's a p, there's a p, and there's a p. So our combination of variables that makes these three the same is m cubed x y squared p. We're allowed to add the coefficients on these three terms to simplify. 2 plus 3 is 5, minus 10 is negative 5, m cubed x y squared p. Then we have this one at the end that we haven't done anything yet with, plus y x squared m cubed p. Just bring it along for the ride because it didn't match any of the other ones. We could try one more example. Let's look at number six. We want to make sure that every one of these terms has the same combination of variables to the same powers. Let's start with x squared. So we'll call him a like term. We don't know what he's like to yet. We're going to find out. Uh, x squared. x squared here? No, just a regular x. So we already know that these two aren't the same. x squared here, though, not here, though. So these two have potential to be the same. How about a y? This one has a y. That one has a y. p to the fifth. p to the fifth. So we know these two that are underlined are the same. They are like terms. Now let's check these two to see if they're the same. x, x, y squared, y squared, p to the fifth, p to the fifth. So these two are like terms. And here's where underlining and making squiggles and circling really comes into help because you can identify what your like terms are and which ones are not. So we're going to put this guy together with this guy. We got 1 plus 3, which is 4, and then some combination of these letters. I usually just pick the first combination that's in the expression. So 4x squared y p to the fifth. So this is taken care of, that's taken care of. So we got 2xy squared p to the fifth minus 7 of those. 2 minus 7 is negative 5, and then this combination, xy squared p to the fifth. And that is all. That is as simple as this expression can get. I want you to try number seven on your own. We're going to pick up with number four, number seven, and then the two on the front whenever we do lesson 21 in class. If you missed anything or were confused on any sort of concept that we reviewed today or introduced, 
make sure you go back and rewatch the video. And that is all for lesson 21.